Hey everyone, this video is going to go over the PowerPoint in the week 9 module on how to use sources. As I said in the previous video, I know you guys have already taken classes and learned how to do research and how to deal with sources. I just want to give you guys a refresher and maybe offer some tips that you can use that maybe you actually haven't learned before that might make it a little easier to use your sort to, to integrate your source information a little more smoothly. Um, so as you know, three ways to use source information in your essay is you can summarize, paraphrase, or quote, right? So we're going to talk real briefly about each of them. Um, you're going to want to summarize and paraphrase the most in your research. Use direct quotes sparingly, right? Putting source information into your own words and your own, you know, and, and being able to reiterate it in your own words shows that you have a true understanding of that material. It shows that you have absorbed it, analyzed it, synthesized it, and now you're giving something new back to us, right? Um, and putting things into your own words can help the reader better understand what's coming from that source. A lot of times we're using sources that can be really formal and um, using a lot of language that we don't use on a daily basis. And if you're just using those same that same wording, even if it's direct quotes and you're citing it properly, it might not be easy for the reader to, to quickly understand that source material. If you're putting things into your own words, like truly putting it into your own words, your reader stands a much better chance of understanding exactly what that source information is saying and how it relates to your argument, right? Um, don't include your commentary in a source, in a summary or a paraphrase, right? That comes before and after the source material, right? Um, introduce the summary or paraphrase and then afterwards give your own ideas that show how that source information relates to your ideas, to your argument. Um, and you don't want the reader to ever become confused about which information is yours and which is coming from a source, but you want everything to sound like your words but that's where the citations come in to make sure that they know oh this sounds like you know tiffany totally wrote this section but the citation tells me the information came from a source but it sounds so much like her normal voice when she writes that i know she truly understood the source and put it in her own words and then incorporated it into her argument and that builds my credibility Right. Um, don't include the commentary until after, but make sure you do explain how the source material relates to your own argument. When it comes to paraphrasing, this is where you're taking maybe smaller chunks of information from your source and putting them into your own words. This can be the tricky one, paraphrasing. And um, Slides 8 through 11 give you a little trick, uh, a series of steps for how to paraphrase. Step 1 is translating the passage. You can read that on slide 8, what translating means. Once you have a translated version of the source information, step 2 is then to flip it. And that literally means like reversing the order of the, the thoughts. And then that's on slide nine, how to flip it. Slide 10 goes into how to add the signal phrase once you've flipped it. So step three is adding the signal phrase. Once you have the signal phrase, then step four is to give the citation and the commentary added. And you can see a really good example of that four step process there on slides eight through 11. And then the finished product is at the bottom of slide 11. If and that's what I'm thinking. This might be something that a, a trick that maybe you haven't seen or heard of before. So if you struggle or if you're worried about taking source information 
and making sure that you have paraphrased it and not used too much of the same sentence structure or types of language or verbs or nouns that the original source used. If you want to make sure that you're really putting it in your own words and that it sounds right, use this four-step process. It's really easy once you if you go through those four slides. It's, it's not difficult. It's actually one of those things. I, I, I didn't know about this little four-step process either until I was an instructor teaching comp classes. And I looked at it and I'm like, man, <laughs> if I had had this trick when I was in college, it would have made uh, some of my papers a lot easier to get through. It is what it is, though. Um, so go through that four-step process there, slides 8 through 11. Slide 12 gives you a lot of different verbs that you can use for those signal phrases. Um, and it's all going to depend on what you're trying to convey when you use the source information. But a nice list there of common verbs that are used in the signal phrases to introduce the information coming from a source. You can always refer back to this slide as well. Um, the next set of slides talks about how to integrate quotes, right? Remember, you only want to use direct quotes when absolutely necessary. When the original author made a point so clearly and so concisely that you really can't think of a better way to say it. <laughs> um, maybe it's just particularly vivid or striking the way they said it originally, and you just don't want to mess with it, right? Um, maybe it's really uh, dense, um, very complicated, so it's actually better to use the exact words and then unpack it for the reader. Um, or if you're making a claim, this is part of your argument here, where you think the reader is not going to believe you or they're not going to agree with you, then you might want to use a direct quote from a source to help drive it home to your reader that, that you, what you're saying is valid. Um, but again, use those direct quotes sparingly and only when you think it's absolutely necessary. Um, always have a good reason for using a direct quote, otherwise use a summary or paraphrase. Don't allow any of your source information to speak for itself, certainly not the direct quotes. Always make sure that you have provided an explanation or an analysis of the source information. Um, and don't use any source material, don't, in, including direct quotations, don't use it as padding, you know, make sure it's there for a purpose, right? Um, We've got some examples on slides 15 and 16, um, how, how to get good quotes in and how to take, how to make sure you don't have very wordy, awkward signal phrases to introduce the source information. A couple of tips on how to use the signal phrases, the signal verbs um, to introduce the source information. Um, it's all there for you to look at, just again, a refresher. I just wanted to make sure that I hit on um, making sure you understood what a summary was and making sure that you know to come here for that four-step process on paraphrasing if you need to. And then um, the signal phrases that list there on slide 12 and then um, making sure you understood, remembered the basics of using direct quotes. Um, again, I'm not spending a whole lot of time going through this because this is something that hopefully you guys have already had. Um, in Comp 2, maybe even Comp 1, depending on who you took, who, who taught that class for you. Um, but I know you guys, you know, I'm expecting you to use sources in your course project essay, and I just wanted to throw this out there this week um, as you're in the revision stage to make sure that you guys had it to come back to, you know, quick, easy place to refresh your memory on how to integrate those sources. And you will have a homework assignment on it. I hope it's easy. Gosh, <laughs> I was really hoping that the integrating sources assignment would be um, a little, I want to say maybe easy was the wrong word, but um, maybe familiar is the word that I should use. That what I'm asking you to do in that assignment is, is a little more familiar to you.
Having said that, if it's been a while since you've had to do any research, it's been a while since you've really thought about how to integrate your sources smoothly, um, if you're struggling with anything, whether it's the assignment or the essay itself, if these, you know, refresher PowerPoints just aren't helping enough, um, you know, just because I'm not spending a lot of time going over them here in the module material does not mean that you can't come to me if you're struggling with any of it. Please do, okay? Um, so if you do, if you have any questions or concerns, um, let me know right away. Uh, otherwise, you guys are free to move on to the next item in the module.